Good evening, Seaside Shadows, and welcome to Spooky Story Sunday. We have a pretty bone-chilling tale for you tonight out of African-American folklore. It was told for many years, some say since the 1600s, others say since the 1700s, and it became popularized in the 1800s. And the story dates originally to the British Caribbean when it was a colony and those who were enslaved had heard this story. In many ways, there were relatable aspects and in many others, it was a spooky story to sit perhaps around a fire and tell at night. A story you can relate to about horrors, but they may also spook you. Now, there have been studies that have shown this story relates to several others in European cultures as well that pass on a similar message that you should not judge a book by its cover and everything is not what it appears to be. And the story this evening that we're going to chat about is entitled A Boar Hog for a Husband. Frightening indeed. And the most incredible thing about tonight's story is the story was passed down from an original account that was found in the British Caribbean and parts of the original account were found in the 1960s. It's considered one of the most well-known ghost, spirit, supernatural tales of African-American folklore. At the end we'll discuss how there are sometimes slight differences in the story as it's been told over the years, and perhaps some of those have been true while others have been embellishments. But we're going to start with the story of the first-hand account, as it were. And it comes from the Isle of St. Vincent. Scalambe, Scalambe, Scops, Scalambe. See my lover coming there, Scoops, Scops, Scalambe. I guarantee you don't want to be hearing that outside later tonight, but that's a chant that comes from the boar hog. Once upon a time, at a very good time, there was a massa king and he had only one daughter. Naturally, we know that a princess as she were would have to have the best life ahead of her. And there were many young fellows that were constantly talking of becoming her betrothed. And they all wanted to marry her. And they would call on her one by one. And the Massa King liked some of them for his daughter. But one by one, the daughter would say to her, Not this one. Not this one. None of them suited her. And her father would not marry her to anyone that was not of her liking. But then one day, a gentleman caller came and she said, Yes, Daddy, this is the one, this fellow here. And this was after years of saying, No, Daddy, I don't like him. No, Mommy, I don't like him. But she fell in love. And when she did with this last fellow, it was the deepest love she ever felt. She knew it was true, it was love at first sight. Perhaps a frightening prospect when you think about such a thing. Because you do not know someone. But they say she was in that puppy love. She almost lost her head altogether. What she didn't know was quite a bit. But the ultimate truth was that the man she had fallen in love with was no man at all. And she had a brother. A brother who found out about this. A brother no one listened to. A brother treated as a servant in the family. Some say treated as a slave. And they didn't even call him by any name. They called him Witch Boy. Witch Boy perhaps because he was a little bit prophetic. But Witch Boy, the little old Witch Boy they called him, would never stop telling the truth to his family. He did all the nasty stuff around the place, so he was often dirty and smelly, which perhaps was the reason for his name. And no one liked to be around him, least of all the princess who was about to marry this man she fell in love with, believing he had no secrets. But one day after work, when her betrothed came to visit her, the old witch boy went up to his father and he said, Daddy, Daddy, 
Did you know that my sister is going to marry a boar hog? What? You better shut your mouth and get under the bed and finish cleaning. Is precisely what he was told. I almost feel like they were about to call him Cinderella. Well, he did what he was told. That's where the old witch boy was forced to sleep, under beds as well. And then his sister got married. And they moved way up on a mountaintop so that they could plant all sorts of good things. To put in pots, roots like Dasheen, Tanya, and all the provisions that hogs specifically like to eat. Well, one day the Masa King came up there and showed the big piece of land that he wanted his daughter and her husband to have farming. The husband really liked that he, of course, had this room for the Tanyas. That's what he as a hog liked to eat the most. So one day he went up to work early in the morning and he was getting ready for his Tanyas and he started singing Scalambe, Scalambe, Scoop, Scop, Scalambe. See my lover coming there. Scoop, scop, scalambe. And with each refrain, he would take off one piece of clothing. And every time he took off a piece of clothing, another piece of the boar hog would reveal himself. And he would transform from man to boar hog. Arms to legs with hooves. And a handsome human face to that of the pig-like creature. Now, as he made this transformation, the little witch boy heard the chanting. And about noon, he came up to the field, coming to bring lunch. And the boar hog man had just gone into the house and put on his belt clothes, took off the boar hog suit, and put on the ordinary suit he came in. But he had to sing the song again. Scalambe, scalambe, scoop, scop. La- scalambe. See my lover coming there. Scoop, scop, scalambe. After a while, the old witch boy came as usual with his food for lunch one day before he had transformed into his man suit. And he came early and heard the singing and saw the change. Can you imagine? Scalambe, scalambe, and a human shoe turning into a pig before your very eyes. When the old witch boy saw this, he dropped everything, rushed home, and told his father, Daddy, I heard the singing. Who married my sister is really a boar hog. It is true. Massa King said, Boy, shut your mouth. And his sister said, Get back underneath your bed, you scamp, you. The next day, the old witch boy got up early and went to the mountain. And he heard the song, Scalambe, Scalambe, Scop, Scoop, Scalambe, Hear my lover come, Scoop, Scop, Scalambe. All right, he thought, they must listen to me. And he went down again and he told his father what he had heard and say, seen, and he even sang the song for his father. The Massa King didn't know what to think, but he knew one thing that backed up the old little witch boy's story. The Tanyas were all missing from his fields and from the fields he had given to his son-in-law. So he loaded up his gun and went to see what was going on in the fields. Sure enough, the old witch boy knew when the boar hog man would be changing, and he brought his father at that time. But the boar hog had just changed back to his human form, so the little witch boy went up there and started to sing, knowing that that's what induced the change. And once more... Scalambe, scalambe, scoop, scop, scalambe. See my lover coming there. Scoop, scop, scalambe. And just like that, in front of the Massa King and the little witch boy, the husband who had just turned into his handsome male form went back to the boar hog form. Immediately, the Massa King couldn't believe his eyes and he took his gun, pointed it at the boar hog in front of him. And fired. Borhag collapsed. The Borhag died. The king's beautiful daughter couldn't believe what she had just seen. She began to scream and cry. But the Massa King told her what he had done, and she had to believe it. So what did they do next? They cleaned the Borhag, quartered the Borhag, and fed it 
to the community. And the first-hand account, he says right here, as I was right there on the spot, I took one of the testicles and it gave me food for nearly a week. And that is the tale of a boar hog for a husband. Now, the var varying variations of this tale over the years after this first-hand count, some have assessed that the princess had leprosy and that she had diseases and that the boar hog husband was so appealing to her because he came to her with a cure for these diseases. Others say that the old witch boy, her brother, stopped the actual boar hog from turning in to her husband because he learned the song before the nuptials were to take place and he took his tin whistle and he went to the wedding and he played the tune of the scalambe, scalambe, scoop, scop, scalambe on the tin whistle and right at the wedding he transformed from human to boar hog. Those variations of the tale could, of course, be true or not. Others state that perhaps it wasn't a brother, but an interested lover that was trying to save her. But the lessons that we can derive from this tale and the cultures which they go back to are limitless. You may be familiar with previous tales, the black dog of West Peak and Meriden the Black Fox of the Salmon River. And we've talked about their roots in Western European culture. And in fact, they too believe the black dog was a beast that had to be killed, that was manifesting as something else. And there was a tale in 1800s Europe of a young woman who fell in love with a man that was actually a large black beast named Tiger, and her brothers had to kill it. But that came in the 1800s, after the story of the boar hog. These stories of men turned beast later became fairy tales and Disney stories like Beauty and the Beast, but they were no fairy tales before. The secrets of someone you do not truly know and who they are when they reveal that could be monstrous. That's more terrifying than the beast itself, is it not? But why was this story so important in African American folklore? We look a lot to one of the protagonists of this story, the little old witch boy, the boy forced to sleep under the bed, to do all the dirty, nasty chores. The boy treated like he was nothing, even though he was the honest one. He spoke the truth, and he looked out for the best interest. When this story went through the South and through the areas where there were those who were enslaved and through the Caribbean when they were enslaved in the colonies, there was a relatability to the old witch boy. The goodness and the help that they were doing yet the lack of respect, whatever they would say, would be given. They would relate to this protagonist who proved to be true, who saw the true colors, who saw the beast inside a person, the part they didn't want to see. It's incredibly relevant today. What secrets do we each have? What are we hiding? And who sees them? And do you know who you think you know? Is there a wolf in sheep's clothing, in you or someone else? Scalambe, scalambe, scoop, scop, scalambe, see my lover come, scoop, scop, scalambe. Perhaps if you say that, the real beast will manifest. Until then, I hope you enjoy our spooky story Sunday. If in lieu of tips this evening, we ask that you support the Black Lives Matter movement with a donation. We thank you for tuning in and we will be discussing this story as well as yesterday's Cemetery Saturday about James W.C. Pennington and our Witchy Wednesday segment about fairies and little folk. And we will be doing the Mystical Monday tomorrow at 7.30 and invite you to send your questions and what you think of all these stories. And we hope you get some sleep tonight and no scary beasts come after you. Talk to you soon. Good night, everyone.